many of us here. And uh, I'm sure with such a deep relationship, uh, the music is shaping you and the sh you are shaping the music. Equally. So, so how has it um, impacted you or changed something about you or have you even been aware of it? My mother is sitting right here, so she would know all of that. <laughs> Sadhana is one part of the journey. So many people come and say, I want to find a guru. You can never find a guru. The guru has to find you. So, when you search, the journey will take you somewhere. And the things that happen around us in our life, I don't know, I left my parents and went to live with my Periyama, my mother's elder sister, who is the first sister of Lal Guru Jairama's mama. When I was in seventh standard or something, and Amma started me on Meena when I was three. So I don't know if I took a decision, but we just found ourselves playing. But I remember one thing, that we are from a big family of violinists. So Mama is Lal Guti, Jairaman Mama, Amma is a violinist, Lal Guti, Raja Lakshmi, Srimati Brahmanandam, everybody, GJR Krishnan, Lal Guti, everybody played the violin. So only my daughter Ma played the Veena, and when I said Veena, um, Everyone wondered, I mean, Lal Gudi is mean and you're not learning from Lal Gudi, Mama? No, I'm learning from him. Why did you think you know me? No, I want to play with Veena. So, they were looking at me as if I made the wrong choice all the time. So, the only thing that was convincing was that photo of Saraswati did not have a violin. So, <laughs> so somewhere along the way, we were sure it was taking us in the right direction. And um, we used to play uh, a combination called uh, Veena Venu Violin uh, with uh, Veena and uh, Lal Gudi Vijay Lakshmi on the violin and Tikkal Mala Chandrasekhar on the flute. So flute only so much distance, violin only so much. So they would all start everything in a upbeat tempo. I was 15 or 16 at that time and since we were three girls, they, everyone thought we were like Durga Lakshmi Saraswati and concerts. 25, 26 concerts a month, everywhere. Hardly, you know, school attendance, some friend would give for me. And uh, perform. But what they could cover in this much, I had to take, like I always say, two buses and one train to finish this distance. So they used to say things like, um, oh, the is, is it difficult on me? So I would say, no, just like flute on me. <laughs> can't play it out, no problem. But then I had to come back and, uh, you know, this is what I think they call peer pressure. <laughs> so, come back and make it uh, possible and seem easy. And um, my guru, uh, Padmatya, my, everybody knows the schedule she had. So, thinking about it now, I don't know how I survived that. But, um, she had four hours in the morning and four hours in the evening, compulsory practice with school and homework and everything in between. Uh, French class, dance class, uh, this class, that class, uh, but four hours in the morning and four hours in the evening. And um, me doing my homework or studying for exam was like a big favor she was letting me do. So she said, okay, if you want, if you finish, you can do your homework. So that was the way. And um, first, she taught me compositions. Then she made me understand each raga as a as a person you make friends with. And uh, ragas are definitely not a group of notes. So when you play a raga alakana, let us say he played Purvi Kalyani, you know. So it's exactly like when you sing an alapana. How do you react when you go to your friend's house? 
you first go ring the bell and then they say hello and then you go and say, hey, you want to sit here or there no we'll sit here and then something to drink and then you slowly warm up and about one and a half hours later you know your volume level of your conversation is so high <laughs> and then it's time to say i mean you have your dinner and then you say and then it's time to say bye and then when you finish it you have all the memories of what a beautiful evening i had so it's exactly like that you just start with like that you introduce and say you should in the first two places show what ragam because the, the person who's opening the door should know who's this guest who's come <laughs> what are the template phrases of a ragam which are the ones that say yes sir present this ragam i'm here puri kalyan is here uh, and then you go and show your creativity slowly and then show what the instrument can do and then go along make this beautiful journey in the ragam where at one point you forget you are playing puri kalyan and only puri kalyan should prevail mm -hmm. so i don't know if that happens all the time but it should happen often and then we listen to it so sadhana practice is one thing but if it's gymnastics only practice will do for art i think we need something more Creation. learning practice a great amount of divine grace a great amount of guru blessings and a creative mind that doesn't see things the way they are because if it did you wouldn't be an artist so you have to have the template of purvi kalyani i always tell my uh, student utra is here that i teach you purvi kalyani but when you sing okay it's good to sing that for a few times then you must internalize that ragam and that ragam must you know manifold itself to you and you should express it sorry for the very long the journey and uh, i've said this often but i like to repeat it that the really old and good veenas were made from the jackfruit tree that grew in the olden temples the real big tajau temples madurai temples and all of that so the temple bell the huge bell was tied in that tree and for years on when the bell would ring the resonance would get into the wood for many years and after 10 years or something when that resonance has gone in they would cut a part of that tree and make a bridana or veena so now when you buy a new veena you see it's like uh, almost yellow but wood color is when it seasons so buying a new veena is not like going to a store and buying the one that is shiniest of all you have to buy a veena that is really old if a great aunt has a old veena that's your best bet so the older the veena the better it is the better the wood has um, kind of seasoned another thing about veena is that um, 
the wood is a living thing and the veena which is made out of wood is not just a living thing but it is a divine being mm -hmm. so there is a spirit in it there is a spiritual being that resides in the veena so if you don't play for a long time and then you take it it will just look at you and say who are you <laughs> so you need to be connected to it at all times talk to it and tell the veena i'm just here please help me make some music i'm just here please help me i played even this morning remember just help me so then the spiritual being in the veena will come alive and make you do this journey now this veena was used as a what do you call a chamber instrument in the olden times to go even before that in the vedic times this was used as an accompaniment for a samaveda chanting from there on it evolved in sound shape size and structure and today we have this beautiful looking instrument now a lot has changed in the sound a lot has changed in the structure today we have digital veena we have electronic veena we have a veena which you can just take up put it like a tennis racket and go in a flight we have different types of veenas now um we are not here to judge what is the best i mean whether it's okay to do that or whether as long as people play veena and learn veena i i think it's a beautiful thing mm -hmm. so if the child is not looking at the phone and playing the veena are you happy <laughs> so let's not get to whether it's good to play a digital veena or whether they have such wonderful inventions that has come up with a veena where if you play you have buttons like flute um sitar and something so you just like a midi uh, thing you play you turn that on it will sound like that so it's a lovely thing for a child and say i can play flute i can play all of that so this is a beautiful journey beautiful journey and in terms of sound earlier external microphones were used and then we have pick up and uh, contact mics and now people have two three contact mics and then now it's inbuilt we have where you just plug and play um so sound veena sound has come a long long way and um, we use a sound processor we use a sound card and an instrument that was played in a in a gathering like this can now play for a gathering of around 1 lakh people and still be heard every one can be heard so thanks to science and technology this instrument has gone through a lot of evolution in terms of playing styles earlier uh, they were what is known as banis you had um, tanjavur bani mysore bani um, tamil nadu uh, that is the yeah kerala bani and uh, andhra bani and all of that and then with the advent of technology people started watching listening to other banis and they wanted to imbibe what is good in each bani so i like the sweetness of the tone of andhra bani i like the split fingering techniques of the mysore bani i like the pulling techniques of the tanjavur bani i like the meeto right hand meeto of the uh, you know uh, trivandra bani so it's been an amalgamation and this instrument has survived and is reigning as the queen of all instruments since the vedic times so when people ask me what is the future of veena i think who are we to decide that right so the veena is finding people to express itself in generations to come and i think this is uh, um, there is a beautiful uh, shloka veena vadana tatvatnya shruti jati visharadha taalagnana sa apresena moksha margam sadachiti one who is adept in playing the um, the ragas and talas in perfect pitch and synchronization is the easiest path to reach god so i think this be regional and be religious instrumental music is probably one of the closest ways to reach um, emancipation or reach god or reach to a point of if you don't want to reach god reach to a peace of mind so a beautiful place to be in
mean taking from the veena style of playing in your swing mm. or the other way but i want to also ask uh, why veena and not singing how why what made you think what you said that you didn't have a choice about it but you have yeah. chosen My first singing concept was a vocal part ah so <laughs> oh. <laughs> I learned vocal and veena simultaneously and with my very ma and uh, she uh, introduced me to this great veena virtuoso dr s balachandra maverick musician the virtuoso and i don't ha- have to you know say any adjectives everyone knows who dr s balachandra sir was so i used to go for classes and classes with him was something very very different When I say class, don't imagine like you go and then you sit and he sits in front of you and teaches. It will be like a magic show. So that's for another day. We we'll talk about that. But um, I used to learn uh, vocal, and when I told him I was practicing vocal, he said, "Parvati uh, ke nariya pe dhuka, veena vasi ke yaru le, si paar veena, veena vas cha po." Which means there are several people to sing, but there is hardly anybody to play veena. So promise me you will do only Veena. So that is why. <laughs> Voice and um, Veena. So where we try to um, imbibe the voice is uh, the Sahitya. For instance, um, let us take a song like. Exactly where we put the meter. Mm-hmm. 